guys, it's DRD77, and this week I have my week 5 game of ISL Season 7. Uh, this week we take on Blitz, if you recognize who Blitz is, Blitz is the person we played in BDL Season 4 Finals, uh, that Toxapex, yes. <laughs> Uh, so this week, uh, Blitz made some changes uh, to his team. Like recently, I think it was week four, but I'm not sure exactly. But like, uh, he had a completely different team that he transposed to this previously. Like he had an Aegis slash, he had a Mammoth Swine. So I was already worried about this matchup going in, but then he made some changes, adding stuff like Shaman, which uh, which honestly kind of scared me. Uh, off the outset, you can see his team on your screen. His this matchup is quite scary. Like. My team does not deal with Rotom, Heat, or Shaman particularly well. And Alt Mega is always a problem, especially when I have Mons like Zarud and Barascuda. It's it's not like... I have to be very careful about what I click to deny its setup. And uh, obviously Crobat is always annoying, but I feel like we can check Crobat. But it's, it's something that, you know, you always have to be wary of Bandit. You always have to be wary of Nasty Bat, these things. And then, obviously, Jirachi is Jirachi. Very solid Mon. Um, but, yeah, this week I've got my whole team out here. Um, pretty much everything was revealed in the match, so there's no real issues. Um, starting with our sets, first up, we have a Zarud Choice Scarf Zarud this week. I didn't want a repeat of last week where we got completely rolled without the speed control. And also, it's just uh, it, it's good prophylaxis because Zarud plus Barascura gives me enough speed control that I can deal with set up variants of you know stuff like uh, crowbat nasty bat will fall over to zarud plus Bar barascuda um zarud should beat most setup variants of jirachi will get revenged by zarud as well uh, we have iron tails that worst 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 case we can touch mega altaria and we can at least like if we're outspeeding it at plus one and it's dragon danced we'd have to hit two iron tails which is really <laughs> unlikely but you know stranger things have happened in the past uh, next up, we have uh, Barascuda, um, Choice Band set, very standard set, Poison Jab, Throat Chop, Liquidation, Flip Turn, Throat Chop's just there, Over Crunch, just because, you know, worst case, again, a very bad situation, if he's Heal Bell Alt, which he shouldn't be in this matchup, but if he's Heal Bell Alt, then I can perhaps get like a, like a, like a last second Throat Chop on it or something, like, if I'm already locked in after killing Sloking. Um... Next up, we have Nido King. Nido King this week is rocking T spikes. He does not have a grounded poison, and he does not have mons that appreciate being poisoned. And that chip is just so good for us, especially in conjecture with the spikes that are on Klefki. T spikes. Then we have dual stab, and we have ice beam. He does have a few ice weaknesses, so it just helps to have the ice beam there. Even though I'm probably not clicking it much unless it's Crobats in the game. Like I'm probably not clicking it all unless Crobats in the game. Like Shaman. Uh, Mega Alt, it's always like going to be Sludge Wave, it's going to be my move. Um, next up, we have Klefki. Uh, back with a Fizz Def set this week. Uh, this is just to make sure I don't lose to Bandit Crobat in any sense. And uh, it also helps ably with uh, dealing with Lycanroc Dusk. Uh, it's dual status this week um, with Spikes and Flash Cannon. Flash Cannon does so much, does so much to Mega Altaria. Uh, but I, so much I mean like it's a mon with like no special attack being able to two shot max HP and uh, last two sets uh, we have Mew and we have Tapu Fini. Mew is going to be Twisted Spoon double dance with Psychic and Shadow Ball I feel like Twisted Spoon added that necessary power to be able to kill things uh, Fini is a pretty standardish calm mind set except it's calm instead of bold uh, the calm just lets us take better hits at plus one from certain mons uh, on his team, and um, I feel like uh, there is the issue with Surf, Moonblast, and Drainicus. I needed Moonblast this week, like, irrespective. I don't think there was a way I was running this team without Moonblast. But uh, that's basically the whole team, guys. Now I'm just gonna jump into the game, guys. Now jumping into the game, guys. Uh, as you can see, he does not have Lycanroc, he does not have Crobat, and he does not have Jirachi. My scouting priorities for this game are probably going to see which of Rotom or Shaman is scarfed, or even if he has a scarfer. Um, I'm assuming he has to have one because he's not brought any of his speedy mons. And uh, 
on preview it seems like Kangas Khan's probably AV. It's probably the AV fake out set. Um, Shaman is quite scary here. It's it's quite difficult for my team to deal with Shaman in general. Um, I'm not really sure why he has a Mudsdale here because I'm, I'm other than getting rocks up, I'm not really sure what it does here. But uh, my lead's gonna be Barraskuda. Hindsight, I don't think it was the best lead because I feel like uh, Shaman lead was quite free for him. But I just don't see what else I could have actually, in all honesty, just led. So. I, I think perhaps maybe I could have led Nido King and threatened it out, but I, I could not tell if it was specs or if I was going to get specs earth powered or something like that. So that's why I didn't want to lead Nido, Queen, uh, Nido King or Zarud. Because again, Zarud, a U turn and then it comes down to what takes a hit. And if he's going for, you know, air slash or dazzling gleam or whatever coverage he gets, even, or if he's trying to make a read. But irrespective, my lead here is Barascuda. So we lead the Barascuda as he does lead Shaman. I'm going to double into Klefki because I can't obviously take anything from this thing. As he does predict and get off the Earth Power. Good play on his part. I'm not too concerned. We don't have to deal with Crobat. We don't have to deal with Jirachi sets. We don't have to deal with Lycanroc. Klefki is the least important member on this team right now. If anything, it's only going to let in Rotom Heat. So here I take the decision to just set up a spike. I know we have dual status Klefki this week, but it's not it's not doing too much, honestly. The rest of his his entire team is pretty slow. So I'm like outside of maybe having a little bit of utility against Mega Alt, which I think I'll be fine against. Uh Klefki is at, and at this health it's really not checking Alt in any sense of the word. So Klefki goes down here, but we do get our spike up. Yeah, I'm gonna go into Nido Queen Nido King because he for one cannot Cannot Oko us because uh, when we calc damage, it was timid. I'm not sure if it's max special attack based on the rolls that he got, um, but uh, he is definitely timid and he's definitely non boosting item. So I just have the free sludge we have to throw off here, and we do a butt turn to slow king. So he's definitely got some spit def, but not too much. Like, he's mostly fizz def by the looks of it. And that spike is already proving so useful because after leftovers, Sloking is in range of another Sludge Wave. Uh, I'm just going to go for the other, another Sludge Wave. I thought of T-Spiking there, but I think it's too risky a play to risk with Sloking. And getting Sloking out of the way early would have been fun. Like, it, it, it takes away a pivot for him because just look at his team and look at Tapu Fini. Like, he does not switch in outside of Shaman and eventually we can wear that thing down. He does go Mudsdale here. I can sense the most, kind of the most obvious Stealth Rock play coming, but... I can't risk Nido King. Like, the, it would be a really bad play because based on that damage, Sludge Wave did 22 after the spike and he's gonna get his leftovers. We never kill with Ice Beam. And I did not want to take this risk of just leaving in Nido King here for no reason at all, but where the potential upside for him is great and the potential upside for me is very limited. Because what does Mudsdale do anyway? Other than set up rocks, which he's gonna probably get anyway, even if I stay in an Ice Beam, it's not doing a whole lot in this matchup. So I I go into Fini here because we can freely set up on this thing. He does get up his rocks. Uh, I'm gonna click the Calm Mind because I wanna see what he does in response. And he goes Kanga. Uh, we do see the leftovers and I, I in my head I'm just like, he's probably phasing move, he's probably roar. Um, or he's gonna fake out first and then roar. But irrespective, it's like, do I really care? And then I'm just thought about the time that I over predicted too much in the in, in the BDL finals against him. I kept assuming Toxapex would have Haze. And I brought Taunt on Fini. And I realized, you know what? Like, there's no point in me. Like, if, if, I, I really regret not having Taunt on this Fini, but I definitely needed the Moon Blast. So, I just thought, you know what? It's fine. I'm just going to click another Calm Mind. If he roars me out, worst case, we don't lose any health on Fini. So, and if he doesn't roar me out, Moon Blast is pretty much, this team is done. Pretty much. So... I do Calm Mind again, and he does reveal the roar. So good prep on Blitz's part. We get Nido King in here. You ought to have a choice to make. Like, I know this thing is probably spit deaf as hell. There's no way we're going to two-hit KO this thing. Like, this is probably brought to counter all my special attackers on this team. But I really want to get the T-Spike up here. Because the T-Spike would be so good to get chip on Shaman, on... on uh, Mudsdale on Sloking, and it just lets Mew set up a little easier, get those damage rolls a bit better for Mew. So I'm gonna set up the T-Spike here, take the initiative. 
Uh, he doesn't switch. He does reveal the earthquake, but he's like no attack, Nido King. So I'm pretty confident at this point. He's probably like careful nature, um, max spread F. Like that's probably his spread because he's absolutely no attack. I'm just going to go for chip here on Kanga. Uh, it is annoying. We do get off a decent amount of chip and Kanga is going to take out Nido King here. So we are down 6-4 early. But I don't think there's too much I'm worried about. We have chip on Kanga. We have decent amount of chip on Sloking. At least won't be at full when it comes back in. And plus it's taking spikes. And we have both the spike and T-spike up. So I'm not too displeased with my situation. Here I go into Barraskuda and I'm hoping he'll switch out Fearing CC. Uh, because Body Slam starts to get really annoying. But I again, he does not switch a hood. We get a decent amount of chunk, like we chunk him decently with flip turn, but uh, I'm not sure, but I think that was like a lower mid roll, which is really unfortunate because we're 2% away from this being a guaranteed KO uh, after leftovers from Moonblast. So I, again, here I'm again left with the decision. If I don't kill it, my Feeny's going to drop down to sub 50. Even though Body Slam's doing like 21, it's doing like nothing. But... Still, I don't want to take that unnecessary chip on Feeny. HP is important on Feeny. Especially knowing that he's not a very offensive Shaman or like a life orb Shaman. HP is so, so important on Feeny. There is a man that HP is not important on here. And that is Barraskuda. And I can't get Parrot because I got my terrain back up. So, I make the play here to just sack some HP on Barraskuda. I know this doesn't kill. Um, he does go for the body slam again. And we have Skuda in. And once again, I am just going to click flip turn. If he wants to give me this, he gives me this. And he does. And Barraskuda picks up, I think it's second kill of the season or it's first kill of the season. I'm not sure. But either way, Kangaskhan's gone. I go back out into Feeny here because, again, going into any of the other... Like, I didn't want to go into Zarud. And I didn't want to go into Mew. Because I think it's a little too early for Mew. I don't have enough chipped. And I feel like it'll, it'll be a little bit of a waste of Mew at this point. And... Um, with with Zarud, I just did not want to let in Rotan Heat or uh, Mega Altaria. And honestly, Feeny, there's no Mega Altaria that's going to be willing to Dragon Dance like willingly on a Feeny. And he goes back into Shaman. Uh, obviously, he doesn't get poisoned because he's in our Misty Terrain. Uh, a little bit annoying, but you know what? If I don't get the Body Slam para like the last time I faced a Kangaskhan, I think I'm fine. Here I'm going to make the play, I'm going to go into Zarud, we should be able to take pretty much anything from him, and he does reveal the air slash. Uh, a little bit annoying because now uh, Zarud is weakened, and uh, it's not going to really take anything from pretty much anything at this point. And uh, I'm just going to click U-turn here. He does stay in, which is again really annoying for me, but I'm just going to go into Barraskira again because once again, it's the least important of my three remaining mons. And... He can willingly take this pawn from me, that's fine. But this thing gets back in range. Or alternatively, I get a really heavy P jab off. And he reveals the synthesis. Again, really annoying that we had to we didn't get the T spike on it, yes. But I'm just gonna go for the P jab here as he goes into Sloking, which I was really surprised by. But Barraskuda gets the P jab off. Sloking's down to 26. Another P jab should kill. Here I spent a ton of time on this turn because I was just like I need to decide if I can, like, P-Jab alt. Like, I think the role if he stayed regular alt is 39 to 45 plus the poison chance. So I was like, you know what? I might have to or I might have to make a play where I have to harden to Zarud if he starts dragon dancing. But uh, it is what it is. And I think I should take the slow king kill here because there's no good play for me. If I switch here and he teleports, it's, a, it's momentum for him. And I would rather sack here than switch. So I'm going to go for the poison jab as Barraskuda does take out Sloking. So we've got it back down to 4-4 guys. Even though it's going to like we, we, we still have Mew at full health. Even though Zarud and Feeny are a little chipped and Barraskuda is pretty much a hit from death. I'm just going to stay in here again. Once again, I don't want to give him initiative at all. Like I want to be the ones bringing, one bringing in my mons on his. So I'm going to go for the P jab here. We do get the fortunate poison, although it doesn't matter because that's definitely in psychic range from you. As Rotom Heat does take out Barraskuda. Uh, here I decide it is Mew time. It is time to set up. It is time to go in. Obviously, I'm not going to set up on Rotom because I don't want to catch an overheat to the face. 
So my move here is to knock out Rotom. We are modest Twisted Spoon. We should definitely knock out like. And uh, Mew picks up another kill on the season. Rotom Heat goes down. A huge threat to our team. Um, I'm I I I'm 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 not sure. I'll be honest with you. I was not sure if he was gonna be faster than me. But uh, the poison jab revealed that he did have a sizable amount of bulk. And after the game, he told me that he, like a bunch of his mods, Rotom Heat, and I'm not sure if Kangaskhan as well was no, not Kangaskhan, but Rotom Heat. All they were all like uh, even Shaman, I think, were all EV to outspeed uh, Mega Heracross because he was very afraid of Mega Heracross. Um, which I'm not too sure about because like I, I thought Mega Heracross always just got revenge by Crobat which was my reasoning for not bringing it. Um, but here he goes into Mudsdale and I'm just like, it's time. It's time to click the button. I click the nasty plot as he reveals the rock to good tech on his part but I'm going to double dance here. If he has roar, he has roar. I, I, I need to set up to win here. Like my best play is just rock polish. Um, if he doesn't know, I, anyway, he hasn't seen the double dance yet, so I'm not sure what he's gonna go for. Even if he hits me, it's fine, but I just need to get the double dance off here. Um, we do get off the rock polish as he does click the EQ, so we have to hit him here, which is unfortunate because I would have I honestly preferred if he just, if he honestly just let me nasty plot again, but again, I'm not sure what his fourth move is. It could be roar, so this is probably best case scenario for me anyway. Um, Mew is going to take out Mudsdale here. That crit did not matter ever, but like, uh, because even Max Defense Mudsdale is never taking that. Um, and he does go into Shaman. Um, technically, my calcs tell me even if he's max HP, we should kill. Like, I think it's a little bit more than a. It's like a roll in my favor. But as you're gonna see. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's got a lot more spidef than I thought, but Shaman is going to take out Mew here. And uh, he's got a lot more spidef than I thought. And uh, post game, we did find out, since Shaman's going to die, I can say this anyway, uh, that Shaman, this was like a 37.5% to Oko, because he had a very specialized Shaman spread and really good prep on Blitz's part. Um, and uh, like, I think we got like a min roll, but like, it didn't really matter. It doesn't change the outcome of the game whatsoever. Even if we got the Oko, but still, it doesn't change anything to do with the outcome of the game. So here in my mind, I'm just like, okay, Shaman dies to Spike's re-entry. So no matter what, I need to make the most positive play. Obviously, I cannot take a situation where I am sitting here and like, you know, overthinking this. I just I just click Zarud instantly and I'm, I'm scarfed. I'm going to click the U-turn. Zarud is going to pick off Shaman and you know what channel this is. You know what time it is. It's that Feeny time. And he goes into alt as Zaru takes out Shaman. Two to one. All I'm trying to think in my head is don't overthink this. Don't overthink this. Don't overthink this. Just click the damn moon blast. If it comes down to it, if he gets like, if he's adamant max and he can two hit KOS with body slam, that is fine. As long as at that point with the moon blast ship, he will be in Iron Tail range, worst case. That's like the, that was like the worst case scenario. And even if he Dragon Dances here, we will be faster. He cannot Dragon Dance two times, so he cannot Dragon Dance twice to beat us. So the only way, like that in that scenario at least, Iron Tail miss was the way I lost. So in my head, I'm like, so worst case here is I have a 75% chance to win with Zarud. Um, as long as I just click Moonblast. That's the worst case of clicking, of clicking Moonblast. And as you're gonna see, he is special Mega Altaria. And I was not expecting that at all in this matchup at whatsoever, especially versus my team. Was not expecting that. But as you're gonna see, it does not do hit KO. He does not get the crit. And Alt is gonna go down to Tapu Fini picking up the last kill. And the win for the Southside Scissors. GG to Blitz. Really good prep on his part. I was confused about a couple of things, maybe like Mudsdale and such, but I do think he brought a lot of phasing. Like he showed me his pass a pace after the game. And he had haze on Alt. He had Hyper Voice, Haze, and Roost on and Flamethrower, I think, on Alt, which I I didn't understand the Alt set too much. 
but the shaman spread was really interesting the shaman spread was some quite something um rotom heat was just standard boots it was not very offensive so that psychic pretty much always killed it was not even like not even min roll he didn't even live like if i got absolute min roll um with kanga again careful nature no attack slow king was like a little bit of a weird spread it was like 252 defense like calm nature at calm nature or something like that but like yeah i was not uh, i mean once we got rid of slow king i think his pivots went away a little bit like without the ability to teleport i think one thing i like i emphasize with games like this is i don't i was a little bit shaky like especially after last week's like ass whooping we took it was good to come back with a win i do feel like there was definitely a sequence in which he could have won this game if he was dd alt in the end where whereby he went alt on mew uh instead of and kept shaman in the back and i don't know if i would have been able to beat shaman uh it would have come down to probably uh double u turning which is really really risky to say the least um but i i still feel like um we did well we played well we played solidly whatever hypotheticals that were going on in my head this, this is my this is my issue when i tend to lose a game i just tend to overthink which is why most of my losses end up being two games or three games in a row and then i don't lose for a while but uh i'm really glad we pulled off this dub uh before next week we do take on clay next week really really going to be i'm really looking forward to it going to be such a good game um we've got two transactions we've made prior to that game we have gotten rid of our website or we've gotten rid of galvanchala for toros i wanted a little bit more out of my base 110 or like my my near base 110 one Toros gives us a solid base one turn gives us a really good offensive presence out of that because I was not getting anything out of Galvanchla 5 games in I've brought webs once and it wasn't that impactful at all like while it's worse for worse for Mega Hera in a way I the other change kind of just is a little bit of compensation it's not much of a big change Noctowl goes out for Mercro and uh, I just I like Mercro because it does certain things as a dark type that zaru doesn't and it does certain things as a prankster mon that klefki doesn't and i think that its utility in the randomness it brings to certain matchups especially in the playoffs will be really useful or even in the regular season we'll see like i've not made my mind up i just wanted i felt like a little bit of the team's rhythm was off with galvanchla on there in this on this particular team because i i did not have the option on a lot of weeks where i i need i need six mon utility out of this team like the defensive utility of each mon matters even today like with barascuda taking the body slam from kangaskhan that is technically defensive utility it was able to take that hit but that is basically what's going to be coming up but uh, that's probably just going to be it from me guys this is trt77 and this is me signing off Oh, 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 oh,